Ah, literature, the eternal refuge of the curious mind. Recently we've been scouring our way through the infinite complexities and terrifying themes that have permeated their way through both horror fiction and the wider legacy of the narrative form, where we've often focused on the more apparently horrifying creations and monsters that have long lingered in the collective nightmares that we all share. However, as Lovecraft often reminded us, more often than not, the true essence of fear lies within the unknown, and when we peel back the layers of literature that aren't exactly outwardly horrifying, there are some some staggering mysteries that are yet to be answered. Hello horror fans, what's going on and once again welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as today we curiously take a look at the top 5 most mysterious characters in literature. Roll the clip. I don't want to talk about those things. I see the worst in people, Henry. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2007's There Will Be Blood, featuring the remarkable Daniel Day-Lewis as the eternal terrifying enigma himself, Daniel Plainview, and yes, he will drink your milkshake. Now if this list included cinema, then Plainview himself would without a doubt be up there on our top 5 list, but we'll keep it within the written form. It leads us to an interesting point as well, because you know that we like to keep things fresh here, so just like our top 5 monsters in literature list, we'll be segueing any of the works of Stephen King, Lovecraft or Barker, purely for the fact that there's a whole host of mysteries to choose from. So let's begin, shall we? Kicking off at number five, V. V for Vendetta. And yes, literature includes graphic novels, and what better way to kick off this particular list than with one of the most enigmatic, complex and mysterious characters ever inked and penned, the figure known only as V. Beneath this mask there is an idea, Mr Creedy, and ideas are bulletproof. And it is perhaps important to note that the eternal mystery of V is the point of his character entirely. Created by the genius of Alan Moore and David Lloyd, V was never intended to be a face, but instead a mask to be the canvas of a symbol. Obviously you could argue that, what's the point then? He's a mystery. Cool, let's move on. But despite the very clear mystery of his outward appearance, that doesn't mean that his character isn't equally as ambiguous. Far from it, in fact, as the true nature of V has been a constant source of speculation ever since his creation in 1982. Throughout the novel, the man that V was before his capture and detainment at the Lark Hill resettlement camp is never revealed, not even a sniff. All that we know is that a dystopian Britain is under the vice-like control of Norse Fire, a fascist dictatorship that has committed genocide on anyone that doesn't fit their doctrine, and V was one of those people. After a series of horrific and violent medical experimentations, the man in room 5 was the sole survivor, and thus begins his quest for revenge. I mean, many of you have probably seen the 2005 interpretation of this tale, but please read the novel because there's many more themes condensed inside of it. The thing is, we never truly understand whether V was a product of his own design or a result of the atrocities committed by Norsefire. As a literary character, his strength lies in his ambiguity, where V becomes more than just an overpowered character in a dystopian superhero graphic novel, but a faceless philosophical answer as to the questionable nature of authority. Coming in at number four, Boo Radley, To Kill a Mockingbird. And if we're talking about mysteries as to whether I'm a direct descendant of Scout, Jem and Atticus, is yet to be revealed, but as it remains, the Finch family name strangely tied me to this book at school, but surnames aside, it's also a tale that many of you will certainly be familiar with. And rightly so, because Harper Lee's resounding 1960 novel, To Kill a Mockingbird, became one of the widest taught novels in the Western world. Lee's novel is immensely important, and her depiction of racial injustice and societal challenge in 1930s America still sets a watchman to modern society, and all of that is underpinned by the eternal fictional enigma of the reclusive Arthur Boo Radley, a character that still holds more questions than answers. And even after analysing every page of Lee's novel and understanding the fictional significance of Radley, we can only ever catch a glimpse of the man lurking on the shadow of the porch. On the surface, through the eyes of the young scout Finch, Boo Radley is the stereotypical monster at the end of the street. In more literal terms, than you may imagine. He lives in a dilapidated old house, crumbling in disrepair, peeking behind broken windows. Throughout the opening of the novel, as the children's fascination with fear grows, they tell each other tales, and Boo Radley's monstrous legend becomes more and more grotesque. He catches live squirrels with his bare hands and eats them raw. He traps neighbourhood cats to cook them up in a stew. The town of Maycomb had long whispered that Radley was a giant, violent ogre of a man, but then, of course, that perspective quickly shifts, as Scout and Jem begin to see the world through much clearer eyes with their new interpretation of the true injustices in society. I mean, I'll try and avoid as many spoilers as possible because I'm not in the business of spoiling the point of one of the great American classics, but even then, long after To Kill a Mockingbird has left its impression on you, Boo Radley is like smoke 
on the page. Gone? Who knows? Swinging in at number three, the underground man. Notes from the underground. Fyodor Dostoevsky is one of the greatest, most underappreciated literary minds of the 19th century, and it took many decades before the vast majority of his works were given the critical scrutiny and analysis of what they truly deserved. Although primarily looked at through a lens of existential crises and the mysterious nature of the human mind, Dostoevsky is responsible for creating some of the most significant anti-heroes in literature, and perhaps his most telling as well as being his most mysterious is the aptly titled Underground Man, the protagonist of his resounding 1864 novella Notes from the Underground. He is a man with no name who journeys through the dark underbelly of Russian society in an inexplicable attempt to find purpose in a paranoid and painful time of turmoil. Now listen guys, we obviously don't want to get too bogged down in the literary themes of Notes from the Underground because there's so much in there that we probably have to take a chainsaw to it just to get through, but that ideological miasma serves only to prop up the mystery of the underground man himself, and for a character that goes through so much psychological turmoil, even to this day, we still know truly nothing about him. And perhaps therein lies Dostoevsky's point. The underground man is the definition of an unreliable narrator. We cannot trust a single word he says because every other paragraph becomes a contradiction. The whole point of his journey through the cruel space of the human mind is to fruitlessly attempt to pick at the mystery of existence, and like I said, that is a heavy theme, but what he finds there is entirely a matter of perspective, because after all, there is no more immediate mystery than to know what someone else sitting right next to you is thinking. Next up at number two, Judge Holden, Blood Meridian. And I'll be damned if Cormac McCarthy didn't make this list with perhaps his own literary interpretation of the devil himself, Judge Holden. Well, maybe anyway, because when it comes to psychopathic mystery, no one quite holds a candle to the judge. In fact, the violent nature and psychological mystery of Judge Holden, with his first appearance in McCarthy's 1985 novel Blood Meridian, has led him to be viewed more as a supernatural entity by fans of McCarthy's work, rather than just a man that he often claims to be claim being the definitive word. And it's also important to note that Judge Holden may perhaps be a real historical figure, a notorious criminal and ruthless murderer that roamed the borderlands of the southern United States in the mid 19th century, operating alongside his band of professional scalp hunters. Because as we all know, the truth is often stranger than fiction, right? As he is depicted in Blood Meridian, Judge Holden is described as being seven feet tall, completely bare of body hair, including eyebrows and eyelashes, and with such pale skin that it seems to have no pigment in it at all. Although his strange and otherworldly appearance only serves to perpetuate the horrifying atrocities of his deeds. Despite the mystery that surrounds the judge, he is a very blatant and successful cold-blooded killer. He is an expert marksman, a strangely beautiful musician and dancer, and is exceptionally articulate, demonstrating an almost supernatural depth of knowledge in fields such as geology, chemistry, archaeology and law. It's strange because McCarthy chooses to paint and portray the most outwardly violent and physically destructive character in fiction, and then he chooses to gift him with some of the greatest boons that a human could hope for. And despite that, he chooses to use those skills to serve the oppressive nature of his evil. Scholars have been scratching their heads as to the truth behind Judge Holden for decades, and as far as mysteries go, McCarthy's literary creation is a true enigma. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, Tom Bombadil, The Lord of the Rings. And I've been waiting for the right time to feature this guy on one of our lists, and truth be told, there are perhaps few other fictional characters that can rightfully claim to be such a mystery of literature. Tom Bombadil certainly fits that role, so much so that Tolkien himself refused to comment on the true nature of the strange figure that lurks in the Old Forest, only ever stating in public that his appearance in the Lord of the Rings trilogy served a purpose. What that purpose is or was, well, we will certainly never find a complete answer to that question. And only speculation remains. What do we know about Tom Bombadil though? Well, he's a jolly figure, he's fat, he smiles all the time and enjoys dancing, eating, being friendly and gregarious and offering help to travellers in need as Frodo and the Hobbits find out on their journey through Buckland. Well, if that's the case, he sounds exactly like a Hobbit, right? No, because as explicitly stated, no Hobbit has ever heard of him, despite his relatively close proximity to the Shire. It's not until the four Shirelings make their way through the horrifying old forest to find his friendly hut in a strange clearing that his existence is told. 
Lord. Not even Elrond, the greatest law keeper of the Third Age, knows who this entity is. However, Elrond is vaguely aware that there was once a being known as Yarwin Ben Adar, which means oldest and fatherless, that lived in roughly the same area as Tom Bombadil appears. We could speak for hours about the mysterious complexities of this character that only ever appears in a few choice pages of Tolkien's work, and the fact that Tolkien himself was so tight lipped about the true nature of his literary creation is perhaps telling of his origin. Maybe that was the true intention, maybe it's a mystery not even Tolkien himself knew. Maybe old Tom Bombadil was meant to be the question without an answer. Well there we have it horror fans, that list for the top 5 most mysterious characters in literature. What did you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Have any more to add to this list? Then let us know your picks down in the comment section below as well as any interesting insights that you may like to add. Before we depart from today's video let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. First up Neil Aranda says, I swear Senor Jack Finch my list of must watch continues to grow with each video you all post. Thanks for all these top shelf recommendations. Cheers from California. And you're very welcome Neil Aranda, glad to be of service. I think it's a pretty symbiotic effort too as I can safely say the same for all of you top 5 scary fans. So cheers from me as well. And finally Jose Ortega says, Jack probably uses the most expensivest shampoo and conditioner because his hair is like hella thick and bouncy. Well Jose I'll tell you my trade secret despite having a cap on today. I don't use shampoo at all. I just use soap and water. Oh and wind. Wind is very important. Well unfortunately that's all the secrets that we have left to reveal for today's video. Just sticking around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top 5 scary videos in particular then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual I've been your horror host Jack Finch. You've been watching top 5 scary videos and until next time you take it easy. Thank you.